Hi, I'm television producer Lou Turner and in today's EADS News Network we'll be following hundreds of students from all over southeastern Colorado school districts as they learn about careers in science, technology, engineering, math, art, and design. The students gain knowledge about advanced manufacturing, 3D printing, get a close-up experience with drone demonstrations and unmanned robotics. They'll learn about aeronautics, astronautics, and cybersecurity careers, and even have a close-up experience with the Boeing H-47F Chinook Advanced Multi-Mission Helicopter and the Sikorsky Black Hawk Utility Helicopter that both flew into the Eads High School track field for this event. There's all that and a lot more as we cover this one day learning extravaganza called Dream Big Colorado. But first, let's talk with Lieutenant Governor Donna Lynn, who is encouraging high school students to study and build the workforce of the future in Colorado's key aerospace industries. Now, you may not know it, but Colorado is the number one state in the country when it comes to aerospace jobs. So today you're going to have the opportunity to meet some amazing people, the people here behind me and throughout the school, who are doing some of this work, who are dreaming big. Well, uh, we are out at Eads High School and we have a program called Dream Big, which is to encourage young people in high school to understand the aerospace industry and there are many dimensions to it, from cybersecurity to manned uh, space flights to unmanned space flights. We've got a whole lot of technology coming up for you in this show, but next let's stop by the Aviation You Can Fly classes, where students learn about careers in aviation with CDOT and the Colorado Division of Aeronautics. And then some lucky students fly out of the Eads Airport in a Cessna 182, where we get an aerial view of the town. All right, welcome everybody. My name's Sean Setterberg. I work for CDOT. Um, and the Division of Aeronautics. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about all the different things in aviation that you can do as a job or a career. Does anybody here have aspirations to, to be a pilot right now? Anybody? Has anybody seen Top Gun, the movie? Top Gun? Pretty cool movie, right? So when I saw that movie, um, I was in sixth grade, and from that day on, when I saw that, that was my dream, to be a pilot for the military. I didn't care what branch of the military it was as long as I was going to be able to fly. But believe it or not, not only does CDOT, the Department of Transportation, work on highways and roads, um, but we also help take care of airports all across the state of Colorado. So we have, in the state of Colorado, how many airports do you think, someone throw out a guess, how many airports do you think are in Colorado? 25. 25, anybody got another guess? You're close. Not really, but. <laughs> 15? What if I told you there were 74 public use airports in the state of Colorado? There's a lot of them. So yeah, and, and Eads is one of those public use airports right here, um, just outside of your city limit, or in, in the city here. My name is Mitch Bowers. I'm a commercial pilot. I run an aerial and aviation photography business out of Centennial Airport in Denver called Imageworks. And today for flying with EADS, we brought down the Wings Over the Rockies Air and Space Museum's Cessna 182 and gave 21 kids airplane rides. Ah, so uh, how many kids? 21 kids. 21 kids today, seven flights of three. Right. About 10 15 minutes between flights, we load them up, go fly, come on back, grab the next group. Nice, nice. Well, I provide aerial photography mostly for large construction companies who are doing projects throughout Colorado. Um, provide aviation photography. We do air to air photo shoots where we're flying in formation with another airplane. Um, provide photography work for some aircraft manufacturers, oil companies, you name it. You know, for a lot of air to ground photography. Typically the camera's in my right hand, I'm flying with the left hand and shooting with the right hand. Right. With the window open.
Don't go away. ENN Colorado will be right back. Need a DJ or karaoke in Central or Southeastern Colorado? For the most fun entertainment, sing it yourself. Call Lori at 719-505-8332 or email karaokecolorado at gmail.com and sing all your favorite songs at your next party. The Boeing H-47 F Chinook is an advanced multi-mission helicopter for the U.S. Army and the International Defense Forces. Its primary role is troop movement, artillery placement, and battlefield supply. The Chinook also carries out many secondary missions here in Colorado, including medical evacuations, disaster relief, search and rescue, and firefighting. This heavy lift helicopter landed in the Eads High School field so the students could get a first-hand look. Good afternoon. I am CW2 Halfpap. I'm with the Colorado Army National Guard and what you have in front of you here is a CH-47 Fox model helicopter. It's a fifth generation Chinook helicopter in the United States Army line. Um, its inception was in 1955. Uh, this particular model was built in 2010. It's the, uh, it's the youngest aircraft in our fleet of six with approximately 600 hours. This aircraft's max uh, gross weight capacity is 50,000 pounds. However, as you see it, here on the field, it's about 33,000 pounds, um, so leaving about 17,000 for a cargo or payload. Um, approximately 2,000 pounds an hour is the burn rate. It holds about 6,000 pounds of gas, so approximately three hours of flight time. Um, she'll fly pretty far. However, we can put internal tanks on here and, and fly for a little bit longer, about 5,000 gallons a piece. Um, as mentioned, this is the newest generation of uh, Chinook helicopters. has a uh, fully coupled flight director, which is essentially an, an autopilot, and uh, a glass cockpit, which is uh, one of the newer, newer additions of this particular helicopter. Its primary mission is uh, troop movement, uh, external loads, and cargo movement. That's what we do on the battlefield here at a local area. We do uh, firefighting. Uh, we have a 2,000 gallon water bucket that, uh, that will hang underneath, underneath the center hook of that, uh, the aircraft and uh, has the ability to put 2,000 gallons on a fire, which, um, which, which makes it uh, good for the guys on the ground. Um, and we also do um, evacs. Uh, in 2013, we, uh, we did a, a mass evacuation of the folks there uh, west of Boulder when we had the uh, millennial floods. Um, back in 2013, so uh, that was a good mission. Well, where, are you, where are you based out of? I mean, where is this helicopter usually flying out of? So this helicopter is based out of Buckley Air Force Base in Aurora, Colorado, and we have, a, a, as mentioned, a fleet of six out there. The robot SWAT team from Colorado's Pueblo County Sheriff's Office Special Weapons and Tactics were on hand at the Dream Big Ease event to demonstrate robotics technology that is often used by law enforcement in dangerous situations. So what are these drones used for? This is actually a robot that we use uh, on SWAT missions, uh, send it in to visualize a house or to see if there's anybody in there for threats before we send any person in there. We'd rather it uh, take, a, I guess, a round or get in trouble before a, a human being would. And this uh, is a safe way for us to see what's inside a house. Great, great. And who are you guys with? Pueblo County Sheriff's Office. Pueblo County, is this Pueblo? Yeah, okay, Pueblo great. County Sheriff's Office. We're the two members of the SWAT team. All right, great. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Casey Sheridan, Kiowa County Sheriff, out here at the Dream Big event. Uh, it's been a great turnout. Especially excited to sh show all of our rural kids of what they can dream for and strive for. And I hope our kids uh, get some good ideas for future careers out here today and they come back and can be a, a pillar of our community. There are so many more amazing things to see in today's show, but don't forget to share, subscribe, and like our Eads News Network YouTube channel. And check out some of our other videos. Later in the show, we have the 
and XP Smarter World Tour Truck and the Blackhawk Helicopter and some drones. But first, Advanced Manufacturing, the Colorado School of Mines and the 3D Printing Store demonstrate some of the advanced printing technologies at the Dream Big EADS event. You're joining the space program or the Air Force or the National Guard? What are you doing here? I'm going to be a hacker. You're going to be a hacker? Yes. We did the space blast off to Mars. Yeah. And advanced manufacturing. Yeah. And then we, uh, we got to learn about 3D printers. We look at how this is distributed. It's a little bit different shaped, but it's the same exact data. So sometimes it matters how we group different distributions of the same data. And that's one thing that's important. Um, in, in 3D printing because so the, my area of research is with the powders. So instead of using plastic for 3D printing, we start with metal powders. So this is incredibly important research, incredibly valuable to aerospace and other industry. And that's why the work that these students are doing in the ADAPT Center matters to industry, big industry, and big industry in Colorado and outside of Colorado and all around. So we have something very special here in Colorado at the Colorado School of Mines and it's something that both industry and other schools and all kinds of people are interested in knowing the answers to the questions. So what they're presenting you here today is really important information. You have the you know, extruder right here and it's drawing this tool path and then once that tool path is complete it drops it down and then you get this guy's the end part. If you want to check it out, I don't know if you guys already saw it. But. What are some of the kind of things you made here? So these are all just prototype kind of just for show models. We also have functional, this guy is a SLS, uh, it's a different technology, but um, this is a functional gas tank so you could fill this with gas and put it on your custom motorcycle and actually just drive off with it. Um, this is a uh, aluminum metal bracket, actually it's for the uh, Hummingbird um, from Reference Technologies. This is a motor mount for it. Uh, but it's uh, printed DMLS and it's a uh, solid aluminum. So it can print aluminum in different metals too? Yes, not this technology that you saw right. behind us, but three, uh, the additive manufacturing can. So and what's that thing over there? Motor? This is a uh, high bypass uh, jet turbine that you would see on a commercial airliner. Uh, right in here in the front, fan blade spin, compress air, ignited in the ignition chamber. And then uh, expand and expel hot gas out the back. That's that's what gives you the thrust. So it's just a breakaway model of how that works. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. What are these? Your 3D printer? Uh, it's a little giveaways. Yeah, it's a little Charmander. It's a Pokemon. It's Pokemon. Okay. Are you with the high school? Uh, yeah. We're from Springfield. Ah, okay. Okay. How do you like the uh, event here today? It's pretty fun. It's interesting seeing all the different companies that come together to make products for people. Whether it be out of plastic or Mars landing rover stuff. <laughs> Aerospace and defense industry champion Jay Lendell inspires students to dream big. He's with the Colorado Office of Economic Development and International Trade. They recently hosted the Dream Big event at the Eads High School here in southeastern Colorado. Working with Jan Richards of Kiowa County Economic Development, Eads High School Principal Betsy Barnett, Superintendent Glenn Smith, and Michael Sullivan of Sedgwick County Economic Development. This was the second annual Dream Big event, and it was a stellar learning experience. So I'm Mike Sullivan, and I'm Captain Willie Daniels of Shades of Blue, and uh, I work for Central County Economic Development. Um, I was a guy lucky enough to talk to Jay Lindell and start all this. And I'm a captain for United Airlines. I fly 777 aircraft all over the world, and one of the things that we're doing here in EADS is to help expose your students to the opportunities that are available to them in the areas of STEM, STEAM, and STEAMED.
And what does that all mean, STEMS? Well, well, it's a terminology, it's an acronym, uh, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. It metamorphosed into uh, STEAM, which is Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math, because we wanted to include art in that. And it's metamorphosed one more time by adding the D on, which stands for Design. Uh, we want the kids to grow up and understand the importance of being able to understand technology and science and designing things and, and even understanding that there's importance in art because there's all of these different technologies is included in that. We have started an initiative in Northeast Colorado and now it's spreading all through Eastern Colorado about helping students find relevant career pathways that lead them through uh, job shadowing, internships, uh, college apprenticeships that lead them back to careers here in rural Colorado. And, and that's how we're going to grow rural Colorado and that's what drives a lot of these experiences for the kids today. And it is a unique opportunity uh, because a lot of these parts of the Colorado, the rural parts, uh, normally they're primarily agricultural but they don't get the, uh, the high tech and, and having all of these uh, aviation and aerospace and space industries come in to expose the students, give them a whole new uh, range of opportunities for them in their futures. So these young men and women we see walking around today, they could be the next one that designs Uber or who knows, there are some fortunes to be made. Just exposure for these kids to, to see what life really can look like. The UH-60 Blackhawk is a four-bladed twin-engine medium-lift utility helicopter manufactured by Sikorsky Aircraft. Modified versions have also been developed for the U.S. Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard. In addition to the U.S. Army use, the UH-60 Blackhawk family has been exported to several nations and served in combat during conflicts in Grenada, Panama, Iraq, Somalia, the Balkans, Afghanistan, and other areas of the Middle East. What time are you guys taking off? Tomorrow. No. Not right now. <laughs> You better move. I have to figure out how to shoot this. <laughs> is this, a, is this a video game or is this a real helicopter? This is real. This is real. I found the gap. Whoa. I found the flares. Oh. Uh, CBT Brennan Young with the Colorado National Guard. Uh, we're at a Buckley Air Force Base. Um, came out here to support the town of Eads and uh, just kind of educate the kids as much as possible. So, seeing what their options are for after high school. And so, what do you got behind you here? Uh, this is a UH 60 Blackhawk stateside. We do um, anything from search and rescue to firefighting. Um, counter drug, uh, if people like VIP rides, uh, we can do air assaults, uh, fast ropes, that's what you see the ropes here. Um, it's called fries and spies. Um, so you got different length ropes. Uh, you can, if we can't land in a certain area, we'll drop a rope down. Um, and whoever's riding in the back can slide down the ropes. And then the same thing when we um, extract them. If we can't land, they can actually hook into the ropes and we can pull them out that way. All kinds of different, All right. different things. All right, well, thank you very much for taking the time. Yeah, no problem. So what do you think about today's event? It's awesome. Recently, as part of the Eads High School Dream Big event, the Space Foundation Discovery Center is the region's first and only dedicated space, science, technology center and museum that is open to the public in Colorado Springs. The Space Foundation is a nonprofit advocate for the space industry. Um, we provide STEM education programs for students, getting kids excited about science, technology, engineering, and math. And we also host the Space Symposium every year in Colorado Springs. So uh, what that's all about is we bring industry professionals and government together, and it's the largest gathering of aerospace professionals in the world. Uh, we have about 10,000 people from about 40 different countries that come through 
this for the space symposium. So our goal is space awareness, advocacy, and letting people know about why space is important, why spe space technology, research, and awareness is important for our industry. So we have a discovery center in Colorado Springs where we provide education programs. It's a space museum that's open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We do field trips and individuals can come in. It's open to the public. And that's located in Colorado Springs? Yep, in Colorado Springs off Garden of the Gods Road. Wow, okay. The Challenger Learning Center also came to the Eads High School in Kiowa County promoting enthusiasm for the sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Located in Colorado Springs, the Challenger Learning Center is improving knowledge and problem-solving skills of rural high school students. I'm Rob Friedel. I'm the president of the Challenger Learning Center of Colorado. I do need the attention of the storm team at this time. Storm. Over. Storm team. The storm team is ready. Storm team. Great work on your 1540 report. Over. Yes, so these are high school students flying a space station alpha E mission with the Challenger Learning Center in Colorado Springs. They're working in teams to solve problems to save a space station crew from a solar weather radiation event. Each one has a particular job and they all have to work together, do their calculations, understand the science and save the astronauts from certain death in a simulation, of course. Criticality is 21.03. The 24-hour proje projected total REMS is 113.64. The recommendations, lessen, lessen exposure to radiation, stay in protected areas of the ship, and limit the time outside of protected areas. Good report. You may move on to your next one, your um, 1600. Over. They're learning a little bit about why they study science, why they study math, and the application to the space program. So we can, we can reach out like this and uh, bring our programs to rural schools. Uh, schools on the front range typically will take a bus and come as a field trip and fly a mission simulation on our space simulator in Colorado Springs. Is this your first time in Eads? First time in Eads, yes it is. You can see the whole world from here. <laughs> the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics has been the principal society of the aerospace engineers and scientists. AIAA is the world's largest technical society dedicated to the global aerospace profession. What is the current planetary mission that is orbiting Saturn? It was just a Google Doodle yesterday. Do you know? Begins with a C. The answer is Cassini. Now the Cassini rock, uh, the Cassini spacecraft launched 20 years ago on a Titan IV rocket, which kind of looked like this. That's what engineers do, right? They need to build um, a system of parts of this rocket in order to achieve that particular mission for your satellite. The RQ-7 Shadow is an American UAV, Unmanned Aerial Vehicle, used by the United States Army, Marine Corps, Australian Army, and Swedish Army for reconnaissance, surveillance, target acquisition, and battle damage assessment. So, my name is Sergeant Sager, I'm with the Colorado Army National Guard. This is the RQ-7 Bravo Shadow. This is a medium-sized unmanned aerial vehicle. Uh, it will fly for about four and a half hours at this altitude. Uh, we can fly all the way up to 15,000 feet. Uh, we can go in about 80 miles out. We don't carry any armament. The only, the only payload that we carry is the camera underneath. With this group, this tight, I could basically count heads and I can see who's wearing bright shirts, who's wearing dark shirts, but I couldn't read license plates, so if that gives you an idea of how well that, that camera works. It holds about 44 liters of fuel, uh, which, is, which is about 11 gallons of gas. We could th stow three of these aircraft in the back of that truck, so the wings will come off and then broken down, and then they'll get stored inside of that truck. So 
and then we can conduct launch recovery operations within the size of a soccer field. So we launch the aircraft on a big catapult and then we catch the aircraft the same way an aircraft carrier would. There's a red tail hook and we run some pendants across the runway and then the tail hook grabs the pendant and then it just slows it down. So, but this is a 100% tactical system. We can go anywhere in the world, have a soccer field, we can conduct launch recovery operations. So we're just looking for bad guys, route reconnaissance, battle damage assessment, things like that. So we don't carry any bombs, we don't do any of that fun stuff. But we have been just recently given the new addition of a laser designator, which allows us to paint targets. So if we see a bad guy, we can identify that the, he's a bad guy. And then an Apache or a, a smart artillery round will release some form of munitions. And then we can grab that munitions in air and then guide it straight to that target. Well, you guys have a good day. And if you guys have any other questions, don't hesitate to come back and ask. Thank you. Thank you. Stellar Explorers is a program to inspire high school students to pursue science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education and careers. The Stellar Explorers is a space competition for high schoolers uh, that exposes them to STEM disciplines in general and gives them an idea of what the aerospace enge uh, engineering is, is all about. And it's a, uh, basically two to six students to a team. Uh, they get a chance to go through and uh, use a professional software to pick an orbit, pick spacecraft components and a launch vehicle that will beat a particular set of problems that we present to them. The uh, top ten teams after uh, several rounds of competition get to go to the national finals for an all-expense trip paid to, uh, to Mars, to beautiful Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> and we take them to the front range uh, and they go to the space symposium, get a chance to see the different displays and the different industry activities. And then we put them through an eight hour additional level of competition and an out briefing. And there's a big awards banquet and they get a chance to uh, vie for a, about a 14 inch crystal trophy and a $3,000 scholarship for each student in the national champions. Ah, that's a good deal. It is a good deal, and the uh, cost of the program, uh, there's a $200 registration fee that uh, can be waived uh, for a Title I school on request, and, but the rest of the program, regardless of how far they go along in the program, is free. The software is free, the educational materials are free, the trip to Colorado, beautiful Colorado, is also all expense paid. For more information about the Stellar Explorers program, mentoring, and sponsorship opportunities, visit StellarExplorers.org. How was today's event? It's been a great experience. A lot of fun. What did you get to see? We got to learn about 3D printers and the skills you need to land on Mars and cybersecurity. Cybersecurity has become a huge threat throughout the world and even in the U.S. presidential elections. Approved and regulated by the Colorado Department of Higher Education, SecureSet Academy currently operates two campuses, one in Denver and one in Colorado Springs. So if I, told, if I went back in time and when I graduated high school in 1986, not too long ago, right? Uh, this phone could power probably the entire school of my high school, and every single computer in it. The power of this phone alone was equivalent to all those computers in my high school. Right? And I went to a big high school of 2,500 people. So this, this is an example of how technology advanced so rapidly, and now we've miniaturized things where we actually have computers that are the size of atoms. What is cybersecurity? Um, what you might know about it, why it's important, who, who are the hackers and why are they doing what they do? Um, how can you be a little bit smarter? How do people keep anonymous on there when there's like major drugs and like weapons that are illegal that are being sold? You know, if you come into a network, you're assigned an IP address, right? So that's how we identify who you are generally. And in a lot of times, like things like Tor, and then anatomize, so you're, you're switching back and forth from different IP addresses, so you really can't find out who that really is coming in. And so that's how they do that, and they use massive encryption. So as you do uh, you know, public key encryption, which is basically, I, get, I have one key, and on the other side you got another key, and so you have to be able to match those two keys together to be able to get a communication between two, those, those two things, right? So that's another way that Tor 
uh, and the dark web operate is a lot of encryption that's inherent into the system. Mars Basecamp is Lockheed Martin's vision for sending humans to Mars to perform real-time scientific exploration, analyze Martian rock and soil samples, and find the ideal place to land humans on the surface of the planet in the 2030s. Mars Basecamp is a great way for students to learn and support NASA's journey to Mars. You guys are going to be in charge of selecting who goes to Mars first. So congratulations, your, your mission control today. We're going to have robots that can run autonomously. Curiosity can kind of do it itself right now, but it still talks back to mission control once in a while. It was built by NASA, mostly by NASA, but um, a lot of companies in Colorado had stuff on it. I think Lockheed Martin had stuff on it. ULA put it up. And we built some optics and gearboxes for it. So we made it actually move and do stuff. This is a docking system. It's about standard for what you would see going into orbit and what kind of hardware you'd be working with. With the Mars base camp, so we're going to choose six astronauts. Uh, and that's what the sheet with the orange grid is on each of your tables. We, got, we have two engineers. We got a doctor. OK, so that's five. We need one more. Do we have? We have aerospace engineering and yeah. mechanical engineering. Do we want astronomical? Large drones, little drones, whatever the size, drones are big sellers throughout the world, especially here in Colorado, as toys for kids and as specialized tools in business. Filmmakers, photographers use them for aerial photos, and safety drones are used for visual inspection of hazardous sites, search and rescue, law enforcement, and military applications. There are separate rules in the private and public sectors for recreational and professional flyers. My name uh, is Scott Fredrickson. I live in Parker, and a business partner and I own a company called Colorado Aerial Imaging. We've been in business for almost two years now, uh, assisting primarily local electrical co-ops um, inspect power lines using drones. Uh, we've also done some things like uh, real estate, uh, commercial and residential real estate footage, as well as support some companies building promotional video um, productions uh, using our uh, footage from above. So did you get any good shots of Eads while you were here? We did get some good shots of Eads, and uh, I'll try and share those with you. I'm bringing forward here. All right, coming down. Excellent. What do we got here? The mini drone? The mini drone. My name's Sean Setterberg. I work for the Colorado Division of Aeronautics. I'm the communications manager there and uh, an amateur drone pilot. <laughs> <laughs> and so we got a little mini controller here. And, yeah. Uh, the little baby, the baby mini drone. I can't keep up with you. Come on back here. Oh, he's running out of juice. That's why it's getting a little squirrely. Cool. All right. All right, thanks. You bet. Thanks. Chips, semiconductors, microcontrollers, processors, NXP is a worldwide company demonstrating ways technology is used in a wide range of industries with their NXP Smarter World Truck. So yeah, my name is Ed Kreuter, uh, and I work for NXP, Smarter World Tour Truck, and uh, we have different demos uh, from different types of industries. So if we come here, if you see all the, what we have in the truck, we have different technologies. As I mentioned, we have uh, 
uh, wearables, we have industrial. Over here on the left, on my left, we have uh, a representation of drones, for example. Um, it's a lot of chips in drones. So basically, we're showing how drones can can be uh, useful for uh, cities. Um, over here, more towards this area, we have uh, electrical utilities um, measuring uh, ele electrical uh, currents, uh, power, etc. Uh, using our chips. Just like what you'd see outside your house? Exactly. Yes, definitely. Uh, if you turn around on this area, we have uh, in the house, we have different technologies like uh, wireless technology, such as Wi Fi, Bluetooth, uh, Zigbee, Thread. Uh, and it is uh, designed to do uh, things like um, measuring uh, you know, the uh, energy, uh, turning on and off lights, uh, things like that. Over here we have, uh, I'll give you an, a demo on this one, we have a um, machine that is a, it's a payment system. You know, you go to the store, you charge, let's say for example right now I'm charging $59 to it. Uh, normally you would use a credit card. Okay. But in this, ca in this case we're going to use something better and that is our uh, watch. And then we're going to pay for it. So we, don't not, we no longer have to carry our uh, credit cards, we can actually um, carry our watches to pay for things. Oh, nice. uh, over here, if we go more to the, towards this side, we go more into the um, medical, wearables and medical. Uh, we have thermometers that are no longer needed to be used inside your mouth or on other places. You know, you can actually use this guy, use the temperature of your forehead to tell you in three seconds what the temperature is. We have uh, toothbrushes. This is a pretty interesting one. Uh, we have a toothbrush over here, which is a Bluetooth toothbrush that has sensors in it. And what it does is for kids, when you know you have a kid that doesn't brush that much, uh, you turn it on, and then now you start playing games with the toothbrush. As you can see, you can kill little monsters in your mouth uh, while you play. You are actually cleaning your mouth. Oh, indeed. We go over here, show you um, secure connected vehicle. We have vehicles now that are really smart. Uh, we're bringing a lot of information to the vehicle uh, for them to make decisions. They will either stop, they will give you warnings, or they will do things to allow you to uh, be safe. Uh, and this example on the screen here, there's a guy that works in front of this car. The car itself slowed down and because he's able to detect the person crossing the street without any knowledge of, of the driver. Um, we also have chips in uh, other ones, uh, like the communication between vehicle and vehicle. So each vehicle will have a radio that communicates to another vehicle, and uh, this will allow vehicles to have some sort of a radar detection, and it will allow them to make decisions. If uh, someone is going faster in an intersection than the other one, it will allow them to just basically slow down or give them a warning that something is, you know, another car is coming at that, at that direction. So here we have a uh, drones. Drones are big nowadays because pretty much everybody uh, is into them. Uh, they've been used uh, for gaming in the past, uh, for, you know, just as a hobby, but now they're being used in other areas. Uh, as an example, photography or video taking. Um, at the same time, it can be, they can be used for uh, Firemen, for example, whenever they need to go and rescue someone in a river, like a floating river, things like that. So um, one of the things about it is that all the technology that's in there, we can, we have, as NXP being a, a company that has chips, uh, that we manufacture chips, uh, we have a lot of technology that can be used, you know, from sensors to the to the chips that control the motors, to the ones that control the vision, uh, the radar, the communication, all of that is basically represented here. Uh, we have monitors for people, we, we have monitors now for dogs and even cats, and now there are monitors for horses. So we have halters, we have colors that have technology inside. And what this does, this one part in particular, um, it basically allows uh, the uh, biometrical information from the horse 
uh, being tracked all the time. If there's an issue with the horse, normally uh, a horse, let's say for example, they have colic, um, there is, uh, you know, it is a connection here of a cellular connection. It will send that information up to the cloud and then send it to your phone. Uh, you would get a basically a, a message saying something is wrong with your horse. Um, with that in mind, uh, you can actually go and see what's wrong with your horse. Uh, it could be at any time or night or day. Um, the good thing about it as well is that you don't have to plug it in anywhere. Everything is being charged while it's, it's there. This is wireless charging. So there is no need for plugging it in or anything else. Everything, the battery, everything is inside the, the uh, collar and the halter. All right, you can go upstairs. I'm just going to show the 3D printer here. Um, right now we're printing uh, a figure in there. It's plastic. Um, and it's going to take about three hours to make, but you can see the progress so far. All right. This is the final product. So that's what's being uh, made right now in the 3D printer. He's a handsome guy. <laughs> it's a dragon with a ball. Dragon ball. And what kind of materials can they use with this? So this is plastic. This is a plastic one. Okay. So in general, it's plastic, and you can make all types of, um, you know, figures. Anything that you want, you can make it with this printer. That is about this big. Let's put it this way, and this wide. So it's got. That's that's the limitations. So NXP is a semiconductor company. Uh, we basically make microcontrollers, microprocessor sensors. Uh, we are in a lot of the consumer products. We're in automotive as well. Uh, and basically we are based uh, uh, in the U.S. We're in Austin, Texas, but uh, worldwide it's a Netherlands uh, company. So anything that you see here, anything that you see that I've shown basically is using uh, our technology. So we're showing uh, our chips inside the technology that we have. Well, that's it for Colorado Dream Big. Hope you enjoyed the show. Share it with your friends. Subscribe and like below. That will help keep the Eads News Network around. Don't forget to check out some of our other YouTube videos. I'm television producer Lou Turner. See you next time. So now you know what it's like to live in the little Colorado town of Eads. A great place to live and the people are real friendly. It's the county center of Kiowa County, so most things you need are right here in town. But it's a small town, which means that there are no long lines waiting at the DMV to register your car. You can get your mail day or night at the post office here. There are some great deals on property. House taxes are real low, and there's no rip-off toll roads like in New Jersey or Denver. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Like most places, there's free Wi-Fi, computers to use, and DVD rentals at the library, and of course there's books.
well on his way to winning his first year-end championship. Oh, Nevin. What a strong horse. And a guy that has battled injuries with that riding arm. He is glad that eight seconds is over. Get her free time. She enjoys roping and hanging out with her friends. 2017 Cheyenne County Prince. Come out here and see this town like so.